You're about to start watching episode three of this riveting video on the history of central heating. If this is the first video you're watching, you're starting at the wrong place. You need to go back to the beginning to video one and start from there. If you are watching the third video and you've watched one and two, hope you're still awake and hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Cheers. Now, we're on the next part of the evolution, okay? Still got the gas boiler, still got the cylinder, still got the F&E and the feed systems. We're still on gravity. So we've still got gravity sets, no pumps. So look, we've installed radiators. Still no pump though, still gravity. This is called a single pipe system. So this was the first central heating system. This was used in hotels originally, hotels, hospitals, schools, um, not in the domestic, but they did actually put domestic and they did actually put two inch 50 mil pipes going through people's houses. So this would be large bore pipes, okay, two inch pipes. They would then tee off for a radiator. They would leave the bypass underneath the radiator because if they didn't do that, there would be no water going back down to the radiator. So that one radiator would take all the heat. But in this design of system, this would be the hottest because it's the first one on the flow. And this would be the coldest because it's the last radiator on the, on the circuit. So again, this would be a flow coming around the circuit, losing heat all the time as it's going through the radiators, coming back to boil. So a very, very inefficient system which needed balancing on the single pipe system, the flow pipe would always enter the top of the radiator rather than the bottom. This would aid convection. We have to make sure we've got the right temperatures of about 10 degrees C, the difference between the flow and the return. So all the rest of the radiators got hot. If we didn't do that, then the last radiator would be stone cold. Again, no pumps. So let's draw a pump in, okay, for the next part of the evolution. next part is the pumps okay we've added pumps onto the system now you can see there's two pumps so the system you won't have two pumps we've got one on the flow one on the return now these were cast iron heat exchangers these were high water content floor standing boilers or back boilers so what they did was they put the pump on on the return and what it does is it put the boiler under positive pressure and the pipe work on the negative pressure which is not a good idea but we'll concentrate on that later now we've got it on the flow or we've got it on the return but nowadays we always put it on the flow again we'll explain later now we've gone down to 22 mil pipe there's no need we're not gravity around the heating system there's no need for it to be two inch. But we're still a single pipe system. It's still single pipe. But we've just got a pump on the return, as they would have done. But this time, what we've had to do is, we've had to put an anti-gravity valve in because the hot water is still gravity hot water, pump central heating. An anti-gravity valve is a non-return valve which works to prevent thermo siphoning. They are fitted vertically onto the flow pipe of the central heating system above the boiler. They are used to stop the water from thermo siphoning into the radiators when we're in hot water mode. We then use the pump to overcome this valve to allow it to circulate around the heating system. So there are other central heating systems out there. There is your two pipe system. We've got the two pipe ladder system. We've got the two pipe um, return system or commonly known as the three pipe system. So there's loads of different central heating systems you will come across. Right at the very beginning, we went from gravity hot water to pump central heating, but it was still on a single pipe. So let's turn this in now to a two pipe system. In the gravity hot water pump central heating systems, the pump was controlled by the room stat. 
Once the room got to temperature, the pump would be turned off and when it cooled down again, the pump would come back on. Let's have a look at this now, this two pipe system. Now we've got the uh, pump on the, on the flow and on the return still, so you could still see them on the flow or on the return this side. So it flows up, we've still got the anti-gravity because we're still gravity hot water, pump central heating. It comes through on the flow and feeds the radiator, but instead of going around to feed the other radiator, it now returns back to the boiler. So what you've got now is kind of equal temperatures going through the radiators. So this makes the system a little bit more efficient. So our flow coming in round to the, uh, to the radiators and then returning back. Okay, so this is gravity, hot water, pump central heating, but it's now a two pipe system rather than a single pipe system. So let's look how we went on from there. So now we've skipped a bit. Okay, we've moved on a few little generations. I've still left the two pumps on the flow and return because you might still see that people put it on, on the return. But we've now gone fully pumped. We're now fully pumped. But this still is a cast iron heat exchanger. This is still a traditional system. This is the systems what were put in the 80s. So we went from gravity, hot water to pump central heating. Now we're fully pumped. No need for an anti-gravity valve, 22 mil pipe everywhere. We've still got a, a feed system, but this is the problem we've got now. We've now put the pump on the flow. What happens is the pump pumps up and we've got the zone valves on the, the flow um, separating them. So we we'll talk about Y plans and S plans soon, okay? Biggest problem we've got now is the vent pipe and where does the vent pipe go? So we've got the vent pipe drawn there and we've got the cold feed coming back down that way. Now the vent pipe is in the wrong place. We need to move that vent pipe because what would happen is if the vent pipe was left where it was, the pump now, okay, would pump across and then go straight over the top because it's the least resistance. So we need to change the way this part of the system is. Okay, we can't leave it like this, otherwise we'll get water pumping over the top, and if we've got water pumping over the top, we'll create corrosion. What I'm going to do now is just rejig this a little bit to, to look at the next progression. So you could still see systems like this out there. So if you're going to systems to change the boiler, and you've got um, brown mucky water in the system, then there's every chance that the vent pipe is in the wrong place. It's one of the biggest problems, the pump being installed. And what they try to do to overcome this situation is leave the pump on the return. So let's have a look at that now. The most common form of corrosion in a central heating system is sludge. A black mud-like deposit resulting from the reaction between the water in the system and the steel radiators. This is called magnetite. Now then, we're getting closer to the systems we're using today. So this now boiler now could be changed to a low water content boiler. So the heat exchanger inside this boiler could be copper, or it could be aluminium, or it could be stainless steel. It could be a condensing boiler, it could be a non-condensing boiler. We're now still a fully pumped system. Now this time, there's no pump on the return. We've gone to fully pump as the systems are now. So this is our 22 mil flow pipe coming up. And you can see now the vent pipe still goes over the top. We're still a vented system, not a sealed system. Our cold water now comes into, oh, it's going into the flow pipe. Okay, so it's now not going back to the boiler, it's coming into the flow pipe. And this is what's called a close coupled system. We've now got the pump after the cold feed and the vent, but before the controls. And this is a single zone valve, so this would be what's called a Y plan. I'll, I'll explain all those later. In 1906, Mark Honeywell formed the Honeywell Heating Society Co. Incorporated, specializing in hot water heat generators. And then we can control it whether we're going to the heating circuit or whether we're going to the hot water. So this system is fully controllable. We've got cylinder stats, okay? We're fully controlled. We'd have a room stat. We've got thermostatic radiator valves. 
Also, they comply with part L of the building regs. So this is a system you could put in now. Over 95% of homes in the UK has a boiler. Of these, 800,000 has no controls at all, almost 8 million have no room thermostat, and over 70% lack the minimum levels of control to comply with part L of the building regs. So let's concentrate on this on this neutral point just for a, for a minute. So this is classed as the neutral point here. And it's, it stays in the neutral point as long as there is no more than 150 mil between the vent pipe and the cold feed. Condensing boilers are up to 99% efficient, while non-condensing boilers were only ever up to 78% efficient. This means that condensing boilers will help you save about £310 per year on your gas bill, but also reducing your household CO2 emissions. So that means only this very small piece of pipe is under negative pressure because it's behind the pump. The rest of the system is under positive pressure. And that's a good thing. Good thing, positive pressure, because that means no air can be drawn in through any of the glands in the valves. Because if we have negative pressure, it could draw the air in, but not create a leak. So we always want the system to be under positive pressure it helps the system be more efficient and run smoother. So we're never gonna get pumping over. The energy within that pump would never get all the way round again and go back over the top because of this neutral point. We've got this neutral point here. As long as we keep those within 150. Now only a certain amount of boilers could have this neutral point and they would be low water content boilers, not high cast iron heat exchangers. Low water content heat exchangers hold between 0.6 and 1 litre per kilowatt, where high water content heat exchangers hold between 1 and 1.4 litres per kilowatt. So this is the progression and this is getting pretty close to what we're doing now. So on the new builds now to comply with part L of the building regs, they would be putting these kind of systems in, but they would be putting an unvented cylinder in rather than a vented cylinder. Let's look at the systems you could be installing today. Straight up, let's get right up to date now. This is what we call a heat only boiler. You can tell it's a heat only boiler because the pipes are coming off the top. Also, inside the boiler, there's no expansion vessel, there's no pump, they're external. So you can see the pump is here on the flow and the expansion vessel is on the return close to the boiler. So this is a sealed system. we were looking at with Vensid, this is now sealed. We've got it going up fully pumped to the cylinder. I have uh, drawn a, a vented cylinder up here, but that could quite easily be um, an invented cylinder. So it comes back down into the boiler and heats the water and circulates around. Now the central heating, because this is the primary pipes, would be the secondary part of that, and then that would be installed on a Y plan or a, an S plan. So the next one I want to look at is the system boiler. So the system boiler is pretty much a combination boiler, but without the plate to plate heat exchanger. The difference is now the pipe works coming off the bottom. So we've got flow coming off up to the invented cylinder and then back down onto the return. Inside the cylinder now we've got the pump, we've got the expansion vessel. So like I say, it's a combi boiler without the plate to plate heat exchanger. Easier to install in the vented system. There's less pipe work, easier uh, sighting of the, the boiler itself. Straightforward, dead easy to convert from the old traditional systems. The last one I want to look at is the combi boiler. Combi boiler replaces virtually every boiler now. Um, so what we've got inside the boiler, we've got a pump, so the pump's inside like the system, and the expansion vessel's in there. But now instead of just having one heat exchanger, we've got two heat exchangers, we've got the second to plate to plate. So the cold water comes in, goes around the plate to plate heat exchanger, and then off to feed the taps. That heat exchanger will be heated by the primary water in the, the heat exchanger via diverter. 
So now we've got flow return going off to the radiators. So this is the main system most guys put in now. I prefer this for the larger houses, but for the smaller houses then this is, this is quite adequate. So that's a look at uh, the systems we've got today. We're right up to date. So let's have a look at these controls. You've just finished watching part three of this ongoing amazing video on the history of central heating. If you liked our video, why don't you give us a thumbs up or leave us a comment down below. If you want to watch other videos, why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel and then hit that notification bell because we'll be releasing new videos every Wednesday. Hope you watch number four. See you soon. Cheers.